Is climate change a hoax? This is a question I've asked to today's most influencing information delivering systems, namely Google Search, Bing, DuckDuckGo, and so on. Now, what do you think they answered? What websites do today's most impactful algorithms recommend when they are asked about climate change? Well, let me share with you the results of a private browsing search I made from Lausanne, Switzerland on Thursday, March 18, 2021. Now, if you do the same search now, you should get different results. So I highly encourage that you do your own audit of Google's algorithms and of all the search engines on the internet. Let's go to the results. Google is recommending websites that essentially say no, climate change is not a hoax. Google is thus pretty aligned with the scientific consensus. This is not the case, however, of Microsoft Bing. The first two websites recommended by Bing are clearly climate denialists, while the third one is ambiguous and raises doubts over climate change, even though it does not clearly call it a hoax. Weirdly, Bing also recommends videos, the first of which has nothing to do with climate change. It's just a video of a dog welcoming a soldier home. On a slightly more positive side, the Wikipedia page is highlighted on the right of the Bing page. Now, Yahoo recommends the same four links as Bing does, and Wikipedia is now fourth on the list, but it does not appear on the right. In other words, those who search on Yahoo and click on one of the first three links will be told that climate change is indeed a hoax. Quant is slightly worse as it put a fourth climate denialist recommendation before the Wikipedia page. Some Quant users will have to scroll down if they want to learn about the scientific consensus. DuckDuckGo is marginally better. The Wikipedia page appears in the third position. It is also featured on the right panel. But the first two links still question climate change. Ecosia, a search engine with an environmentally friendly purpose, is organized kind of like the Bing page. While the Wikipedia page is featured on the right, the recommended links all deny climate change. Finally, on YouTube, the recommendations are all interventions that explain the science of climate change. In a sense, YouTube is saying, no, climate change is not a hoax. And so, what did you think of this? Are you satisfied with these recommendations? Do you feel that search engines are designed to be robustly beneficial for the future of humanity? What I wanted to illustrate with this brief audit of search engines is not so much whether these algorithms are currently bad or good. Any thorough analysis of these algorithms would require a much more extensive and sophisticated study than what I have just briefly presented. What I would like to emphasize above all is that there is nothing neutral about these algorithms. In fact, users want these algorithms to highlight some websites or videos over others. In other words, these algorithms are forced to judge what should be recommended. They cannot not judge. They have to make a decision. They have to choose which answers will be highlighted. Algorithms have to face a dilemma whenever they are queried. Now, unfortunately, because of organized disinformation campaigns, and as discussed in the first episode of this series, if algorithms are not actively designed to be robustly beneficial, then they will likely be hacked by malicious actors that want to promote their views or to spread disinformation. This is arguably what has happened in the case of climate change. Most search engines have ended up recommending life-threatening unscientific content to billions of humans, not because they were designed to be bad, but rather because they were not designed to be robustly beneficial. The only exceptions here were Google and YouTube, who announced publicly back in 2019 that they would invest a lot of means to combat disinformation. And what we've just found out here is that for the case of climate change, they did make the algorithms more ethical. Having said this, the audit we have just done here should not be overgeneralized. To really understand the extent to which large-scale algorithms are robustly beneficial, it would be necessary to thoroughly audit them, especially as the responses have now become very personalized and as these algorithms are regularly updated. Arguably, there should be a lot more investments and regulations to make today's most influencing information processing systems more transparent and to better understand how these information systems deal with the dilemmas they face billions of times per day. 
Now, of course, most of the time, the recommendation dilemmas these algorithms face are not life and death issues. But sometimes when it comes to queries about vaccines, mental health or climate change, they are indeed life and death issues. And since there are billions of such queries to be answered, even if only 1% of them are life and death questions, you still get millions of major ethical dilemmas. Worse, when it comes to influencing public preferences but which energies or governments should invest in, these algorithms are indeed matter of life and death, not only for the users directly influenced by the recommendation algorithms, but also, and more viciously, they are matters of life and death for millions of co-citizens of the users of the search engines. Indeed, scientists expect climate change to have life-threatening consequences for at least millions of individuals within the century. In fact, the World Health Organization estimates that air pollution kills around 4 million humans per year. Better energy choices could reduce this pollution. Even if the effect would only be of 1%, this would still amount to saving or sacrificing tens of thousands of lives per year. More than ever, it has become critical to stop seeing the dilemmas of recommendation algorithms as an individual problem. In the ultra-connected world we live in, what is recommended to your neighbors now affects the health and safety of your fellow citizens and of their loved ones. Especially when it comes to contagious diseases like COVID-19, policy with economical and environmental impacts, or ideological radicalization, your well-being and safety depends on what is massively recommended by algorithms to others. The ethics of recommendation algorithms is not an individual dilemma, it is a societal dilemma. Having said this, the introductory example of this video is actually very misleading. I have given a disproportionate importance to search results. However, these search results represent an increasingly small fraction of how algorithms influence users, and especially in the case of Google. Indeed, since 2016, at any given point in time, there are actually more views on YouTube than searches on Google. In 2019 on YouTube, there were 1 billion hours of watch time per day for 2 billion users. And this figure has certainly exploded in 2020 with the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown measures. But above all, two views out of three on YouTube are the results of recommendations by the YouTube algorithm. Two times out of three on YouTube, if a user has seen a video, it is because they followed a recommendation of the YouTube algorithm. And here, I'm not even mentioning the impact of other social medias, such as Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn, where news feeds are certainly a central place for content consumption. Now, these news feeds, which are what users are exposed to when they open their phone and they click on an application like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn, these news feeds are crafted by extremely sophisticated recommendation algorithms, which select which content to show to which user out of the millions or billions of options at their disposal. Nowadays, most of the time, users don't search for information. The information is served to them by a recommendation algorithm. And in principle, of course, users can protest and change the service they are using. But in practice, most users are just consuming the content that the recommendation algorithm is putting on their plate, whether it is quality information or the result of some organized disinformation campaign. Therefore, the recommendation algorithm has an enormous power. It is deciding what information billions of individuals will be eating all day long. In the history of humanity, no entity has ever had such an enormous power. And as Spider-Man's uncle would say, with great power comes great responsibility. To fully appreciate the extent of the power of recommendation algorithms, it is critical to measure the scale of their influence on the population. Unfortunately, the great difficulty with this is that unlike a plane crash, the disasters caused by recommendation algorithms are not a few spectacular events. Rather, the monumental influence of these recommendation algorithms results from a very large number of teeny tiny contributions to the disasters. Using mathematical jargons, each more beneficial recommendation has a small epsilon effect. However, these recommendations occur a very large number, capital N, of times. As a result, the cumulative effect of all of these recommendations is at first order approximation of the order of N times epsilon. 
Unfortunately, these quantities are very difficult for us humans to conceptualize and we often have a very, very poor intuition of very large and very small numbers. In fact, very basic computations can help us realize just how bad our intuition is. Take the case, for instance, of Jeff Bezos' fortune. This fortune is estimated at hundreds of billions of dollars. Clearly, that's a lot. But how big is it? Well, we can compare this to someone like me, say, whose fortune is in the tens of thousands of dollars. A simple division shows that Jeff Bezos is 10 million times richer than I am. 10 million, that's huge. For example, personally, when I see a dime on the ground, I usually think it's not worth picking it up. It would only increase my fortune by 100 thousandth. Now, proportionally, if Jeff Bezos has the same disdain for 100 thousandth of his fortune as I do, that would mean that if he saw a check for $1 million lying around, Jeff Bezos would not even bother to bend down and pick it up. For Bezos, this $1 million is literally what a peanut is for me. Similarly, when it comes to recommendation algorithms that affect billions of humans, the examples we are familiar with are actually extremely misleading. In order to properly gouge the magnitude of the impact of these algorithms, it's critical to take the time to do the math rather than to rely on our intuitions. And so, let's do the math. What is the number n of recommendations that algorithms make? How many dilemmas have these algorithms faced? Well, we saw that YouTube in 2019 had about 5 million views per minute. Now, the click-through rate on YouTube is around a few percent, let's say 2%. This means that a video has to be recommended 50 times to get one view. That would mean that the number of recommendations per minute is actually 50 times 5 million, which is 250 million. On an hourly scale, that's 60 times 250 million, which is 15 billion. Every day, that's 24 times 15 billion, which is 360 billion. And every year, that's 365 times 360 billion, which amounts to 130,000 billion recommendations. And if we now look at what has happened for over a decade now, and if we also include recommendations on Facebook and other social medias, we get a number that approaches 1 million billion. The number of dilemmas that recommendation algorithms have faced and will face in the coming years is in the order of a million billion. This number is absolutely gargantuan. It is 10,000 times more than Jeff Bezos' fortune in dollars. Now, if only 1% of these dilemmas are a matter of life or death, maybe because it's about vaccines, pollution, or suicides, then this adds up to trillions of ethical dilemmas that are a matter of life and death. Many discussions about artificial intelligence seek to compare humans to machines. However, these discussions often focus on a single task, such as winning at the game of Go, driving an autonomous car, or having a conversation with a human. But all of these comparisons omit the most important properties of today's most sophisticated algorithms. Namely, on the one hand, the fact that the most lucrative and influential applications of these algorithms are not these one of tasks. And on the other hand, these examples miss out on the fact that algorithms are already far, 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 far outperforming us in a large number of repetition of a single task. As computer scientists would say, algorithms are much more amenable than humans to what is known as scalability. Given the disproportionate scales of the internet, this ability to scale seems in fact critical to monitor social networks, moderate fake accounts, and recommend top quality contents. Indeed, to see this, I invite you to ask yourself how many hours of new video are uploaded by users on YouTube every hour. How big is the flow of new YouTube content? A few hours of new videos per hour? A few hundred hours? Well, in 2019, the number of hours of new content per hour was equal to 30,000. Every hour, 30,000 hours of new videos are uploaded on YouTube. And again, this is 2019. This number has certainly blown up more recently. In text alone, that's already enormous. I personally say 10,000 words per hour. And thus, we can estimate that trillions of words have been spoken on YouTube. Knowing that a book is about 100,000 words, YouTube represents 10 million books. 
or to put it in another way, YouTube is about a thousand times the size of Wikipedia. To moderate the platform, YouTube must also manage copyright, determine eligibility for advertisers, detect pedophilia, caption videos, and identify to whom the content should be recommended. Every hour, it is necessary to have analyzed these 30,000 hours of new content. Now, given in addition that this moderation work is traumatic for human moderators and that these human moderators have their own biases, especially when it comes to topics like climate change, and given that it is difficult for them to fully understand and apply YouTube's content moderation policy, it seems clear that the task of making social networks robustly beneficial cannot be solved without algorithms. However, designing such algorithms and verifying that they work is extremely difficult, especially as these algorithms are now trained on massive amounts of data. In fact, just as YouTube cannot be read by a single human or even by a group of humans, algorithms trained with vast amounts of data and whose numbers of parameters is in the billions if not in the trillions, these algorithms are now completely beyond the ability of engineers or armies of engineers to simply read. If you want a chance to solve the millions or billions of ethical dilemmas that must be solved to make social networks beneficial, we must invest massively in the design, testing and improvement of today's most sophisticated recommendation algorithms. This is the fabulous endeavor that El Madi, El Mahdi and myself discuss in our book and that we will be discussing in this series of videos. This is also the monumental challenge that the Tunosol platform that colleagues and I have designed and that is now accessible at tunosol.up. This is the challenge that we hope to address. And if you are intrigued by this and would want to know more, then subscribe and stick around as we'll be discussing Tunosol a lot more in future videos.